we're here back on Survive and Thrive, and I wanted to talk about a speculative asset that I've been following for a while, and it's Qpeng, C-P-N-G. But before we get started into my deeper dive, I definitely wanted to make sure that if these videos are of interest to you and my channel, definitely make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. I'm just under 50 subscribers and trying to push to 100. And I have a very big, ambitious goal of hitting 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. But the only way I can do that is with all of your help. So definitely any help in that area is much appreciated. So going right into Qpeng, they are the largest online marketplace in South Korea. It's an e-commerce company based in Seoul. And they are referred to as the Amazon of South Korea. They trade under the ticker symbol CPNG on the New York Stock Exchange. And I wanted to go over their initial IPO, which was back in mid-March. And prior to that, I had been following and had them on my watch list because I had great considerations of buying in on the day of IPO. But the more that I've been learning as I've been investing over the years is that buying into the IPOs is actually a lot of times not in your best interest as a retail investor because the first access is given to the commercial investors on opening day and by the time it actually opens to the public a lot of times that share price has been pumped up and what i found and looking at a lot of these companies that are coming out in ipo is that several months after they've ipo'd they will come back down to a more fair share valuation price and a lot of times will be under what they closed at on IPO day. So that's basically what I wanted to go over with Qpeng. So as you can see here in this article, they closed at $49.25. As I was watching their valuation and coming to the day of IPO, there was a lot of talk about where they might start and it was anything from 30 to 40, $45. Now, if we scroll down here further, you can see that they made their stock market debut on that Thursday in March. I think it was March 10th or 11th on the New York Stock Exchange at $63.50. And by the end of the first day of trading, they closed at $49.25. And so I had, like I mentioned, considered buying a small position. I was going to buy about 50 shares at $35. But once I saw this happening, I just kind of pushed away from it and decided just to wait. As I've been continuing to follow it over the last several months, I know that they are definitely a presence and continue to increase their revenue. This title in Motley Fool, could Copeng be a millionaire maker stock? It's the largest e-commerce company, as I mentioned, in South Korea. It's growing actually a lot faster than Amazon. and But yet the key concern for me is that it's still unprofitable and they do face some long-term challenges. So I wanted to go over the section, how profitable is Qpeng? They're growing much faster than Amazon, but it's still burning money. Their net losses narrowed in 2019 and 2020, but nearly tripled year over year from 105 million to 295 million in the first quarter of 2021. And they don't intend to break even anytime soon as they're constantly expanding their ecosystem with new services. Instead, they claim that their gross profit, which rose 92% in 2020, and 70% year over year in the first quarter of 2021 is a more meaningful measure of its improving scale. They expect gross profit to increase over the long term as economies of scale kick in. As it happens, it might gradually balance out its operating costs with its revenue, which could pave the way towards sustainable profits. But that goal, which e-commerce giants like Amazon and China's JD.com eventually achieved after years of losses, remains a distant one for Qpeng. So that's why I'm still on the fence about whether or not to buy into this one. I do know that over the last few months, and I'll show this in more detail, that they have been on an overall downward trend. So it is getting closer to that position. I think they're right just above $30 a share, but we'll go into that in more detail. And I'll just kind of give you my thoughts as I get further into this video about what I think I'm going to do, uh, the entry point that I'm waiting for that range and then when I think I'll actually start buying in more 
and potentially start loading up if it gets to an even more attractive share price. There was this article that was written in Investor Place just a few days ago. Kupang stock has two major catalysts ahead. Initiatives already show strong initial growth and that should help push Kupang stock higher. They posted an unexpected write down in its quarterly report and investors dumped the stock. So that's what I was referring to here in the last several weeks that there's definitely been a pullback from the overall shareholdings. And so investors have been selling off. Kupang stock faced resistance at the $40 level on the 50 day and key 200 day moving average. The South Korean e-commerce firm faces plenty of skepticism. Bears have a 5% short float against the stock. The big loss also puzzles shareholders. Smart investors who look more closely at the results may ignore the loss. Qping is investing aggressively in two growth initiatives. So those two new initiatives, it's their grocery offering, Rocket Fresh, and Kupang Eats, its food delivery offering, which accounted for 120 million of the 122 million adjusted EBITDA loss, and CEO Bom Kim believes that it is the largest online nationwide fresh grocery. It already added a thousand basis points to margins on a year-over-year -year basis. Still in its infancy, the initiative will scale. The business has strong demand. Kuping cannot keep up, so it must invest further to support fresh. This is what I was touching on earlier. Costs will not grow as fast as revenue because the grocery unit may leverage the existing infrastructure. Also, Kuping has more continuous efficiency improvements. This will lead to a margin expansion and reward investors willing to hold Kupang shares for a few years. And that's really what has me interested because like I've mentioned in several of my videos prior, I am a very long-term investor. And so eventually I will buy into this company, but it's at what price? If we go to the chart year to date and we go all the way back to, like I said, March, they were in that 49 to $50 range. You can see year to date that they're overall at a percentage deficit of almost 40%. So that's a huge downward trend. Uh, they've had bottoms of $32. And like I said, they are just under $30 at the moment. I definitely am going to keep monitoring them and keep them on my watch list. And if we get to a point, like I said, on the day of IPO, I considered buying a fair amount of shares at $35 per share. But if I see that they go down in the $25 to $20 range, then I'll definitely add a position. If they go any lower than that, then I'm going to load up heavier. So that's my overall strategy at this point with this company. It definitely is still a bit speculative based off of the number of years it's going to take for them to become profitable but they don't have any real direct competition being in South Korea. And they do have other discussions happening where they may expand into other countries. So more to come on that. I would definitely love to hear others' thoughts. Leave your comments below if you have holdings within Kupang or are considering this company. And then also let me know if there's other companies out there that you're investing in that would be worth me considering to be able to buy into because I have converted some assets and I've got a good amount of cash reserves on the side. So I'm gonna sit and wait and see if I can buy into some of these companies when they get low enough at a good entry point. And so I would love to hear from all of you on some of those other options that might be out there that I could do some research on and, and do some other videos. Just wanted to touch on that for this week and make sure you do your due diligence with any companies that you're considering. I am definitely not a professional investor. This is all based off entertainment and my own guided research, but you do have options out there if you're smart and do your research to be able to make some decent money off your investments. Until next week, don't just survive, thrive!